in front of her father and saying note perfect and without ever being taught one of the most difficult of all arias, the one she was supposed to have heard at her birth, Casta Diva.
talent was prodigious, and her father lost no time, first in arranging a New York recital for a seven-year-old, then putting her on a tour with Ole Bull, a violinist and family friend. During the next few years, she visited every major city in the United States, making about $20,000 a tour and causing a sensation everywhere she went. As a child, her favorite game was to play act opera, preferably the story of Edgardo and Lucia from Donizetti's Lucia di Lammermoor. So perhaps it wasn't so surprising that against all advice, she chose this role as her debut when she was 16. If the audience went to see her out of curiosity, it soon turned into astonishment as she sang and acted with extraordinary passion and an amazing vocal technique. Then, at age 18, she attempted to conquer Europe, beginning with London's Covent Garden. Here, her debut was as Amina in La Sonambula by Bellini. The London critics were skeptical of this youngster from the New World, but they were soon won over. The Times of May 1861 carried this review. La Sonnambula on Tuesday was one of the most interesting performances we have witnessed at the Royal Italian Opera. The success of Adelina Patti took everybody by surprise. Patti is a triumphant refutation that art and genius have deserted the operatic stage. In her first London season, she sang a succession of roles that would daunt the most established opera star today. After Amina, there was Zerlina in Don Giovanni, Lucia, Violetta in La Traviata, Marta, and Rosina in The Barber of Seville. She then toured the continent and stole all their hearts, too. At 19, she found herself the highest paid opera star in the world. No one has ever achieved anything like this since. She was still only 25 when the great composer Rossini adapted his opera Semiramide to show off her very special ability to sing florid music.